thoughts on the space race? That is a fun question. And it's a fun question because it's a fun hypothetical because the space race is tied into our timeline with a bunch of other things that are both good and bad. See, we like to view events and trends as individual things, but they never are. Everything is interconnected. This isn't some philosophical, gee, one with the universe bullshit. I mean, like, everything that happens is because something else happened. See, the space race is directly tied to the Cold War. It is part of the Cold War. The space race was a battle of the Cold War. And the Cold War is directly tied to the Second World War and how that ended. The Second World War is directly tied to the First World War. And the rise of the Soviet Union is directly tied to Western policy. It goes on and on. And we could spend hours with our yarn, pegboard, and pictures connecting all the dots. But that's not what this is about. See, the Soviets in the West had a lot of tensions before the Second World War ever started. In fact, the only reason that Germany was bald ballsy enough to start the Second World War was because Russia entered into an alliance with them. And it's crazy because Stalin is not a big fan of the fascists, but because Russia is gonna Russia, nothing is more important to them than trying to reclaim all of old Russia. So Stalin, despite not trusting Germany, was like, you know what, you give us half of Poland and uh, some of these other territories and we'll help you invade and we won't attack you. And it wasn't until Germany got desperate and invaded Russia that Russia came running to us and like, can we be an ally now? They were never really an ally, they were the enemy of our enemy. But whatever, we fought Germany from the west, they fought Germany from the east, and taking advice from Diamond Rio, we met in the middle. And that was Berlin. We got to Berlin, and then Eisenhower, our general at the time, stopped and let Russia take Berlin. And we did this to appease the Soviet Union, because remember, we still were not really friends, and if we took Berlin and drew our line in the sand, there's not a small chance that they would have tried to initiate a war with us. And honestly, this probably ended up being one of the biggest strategic mistakes in history. See, had Eisenhower and the Allies taken Berlin, since we got there first and drew our line in the sand and called the USSR's bluff, one of two things would have happened. Either Stalin would have stood down, which is what I think he would have done, or he would have stepped up. Had Stalin stepped up, okay, we probably would have had a couple more years of war ahead of us, and that's what nobody wanted, which is why we didn't take Berlin in the first place. But our war machine was on his doorstep. All of our logistics were in place. We had better trained troops. We had better equipment. We had better supplies. We had high altitude bombers. Russia really couldn't touch at the time. And we would have settled everything when we were the only people with a nuke. But what does this have to do with the space race? Well, in this case, whether the USSR stepped up or stood down, Germany wouldn't have been split into East and West Germany. There would have been no Berlin Wall. There would have been none of the US USSR making the same mistakes trying to extract their pound of flesh out of Germany that we made after the First World War. Well, Europe made. In that case, we likely would have ended up with the majority of Germany's scientists and technology rather than it being split with the Soviets. Sort would have put the Soviets at a larger technological disadvantage even if things did escalate because, you know, most of our space and defense tech was developed by people who don't have much of a history written down before 1945 for some reason. Anyway, had that happened, unlikely there would have been a Cold War, no Cold War, no space race. I personally think that the space race was one of the best things to ever happen to mankind. We put a man on the moon, we put satellites in space that give us television and GPS and global communications. And so many technologies we rely on every day were invented by NASA. From MRIs to microwaves and countless other things developed by NASA, which goes to show that public funding is still a better driver of innovation than capitalism. And the space race was kind of like the Olympics. Sure, we were fighting our enemy, but we were doing it in a super productive and peaceful way. Granted, we were doing it because both sides were worried the other side was going to weaponize space but still. But the space race was really like miracle on ice, but with rockets and in space. And then once the United States won the space race by putting a man on the moon, we started working with Russia on the International Space Station. Our space programs worked in unison and it was a beautiful thing. Two countries that were at each other's throats working together for the betterment of mankind. Once again, the space race, one of the greatest things to happen to humanity. But it was a product of the Cold War, which was one of the worst things to happen to humanity. Because while well, we never got in an all-out nuclear war with the Soviet Union, every war between 1945 and the fall of the Soviet Union was a hot proxy war of the Cold War with Russia. Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, all of the meddling we did in Central and South America. This is what developed our huge military industrial complex. It was the driver for some of the biggest civil rights infringements on U.S citizens and segregation. It was the driver of McCarthyism and all of the harmful rhetoric that came from anti-communist propaganda. All of that was us fighting the Russians without directly fighting the Russians. And in those fights, 
we fuck shit up. He destabilized entire regions, overthrew democratically elected leadership and installed dictators. We armed, funded, and trained bin Laden and what would eventually become the Taliban so they could fight the Russians. Like, we are the Taliban's origin story. Us teetering on fascism, the expansion of government overreach in the name of national security, this tribalism, this nationalism that's wearing a patriotic Halloween costume, all of it is built on the foundation we laid during the Cold War. Two decades we spent in the Middle least fighting the war on terror, all a direct result of the Cold War. Millions of people willing to hurl themselves headfirst into a cult and follow an authoritarian leader into fascism, they're doing that so willingly because of the Cold War propaganda they were indoctrinated with. This Christian nation bullshit, Cold War propaganda. One nation under God and our pledge, in God we trust on our paper money, all added during the Cold War. Communism and socialism being bad, dirty words that continue to allow our corporate overlords to subjugate us. Cold War propaganda. I could keep going, but, but I think you get my point. So my thoughts on the space race, and I'm sure that this was not at all the direction you were expecting me to go with this question, is that the space race is one of the greatest things to ever happen to mankind. The 21st century is what the 21st century is because of the space race. But for the space race to happen, the Cold War had to happen. So my thoughts on the space race is the existential hypothetical question of was all the benefits of the space race worth all the consequences of the Cold War? And that's a really hard question to answer. Cold War killed millions, if not billions of people, but the technology from the space race has saved millions if not billions of people. The Cold War destroyed the lives, cultures, and economies of entire regions and groups, but the space race has made lives better for countless groups of people. So I don't have the answer because I don't want to imagine a world without the science and technology we got from the Cold War and the space race. But the existential crisis of us falling into fascism come November is not the world that I want to be living in. But as of now, I'd say the jury's still out. The next few years will go a long ways towards helping us reach that verdict.